Hello everyone. I've not actually did a, done a review in, I think it's been two weeks now. I think I got into the habit of doing one every week. However, I, I do admit I'm sort of slowly getting to the point where I've, I'm covering a lot of the books that I have read or that I'd want to review. Um, I, have to, I should have mentioned I've only really started properly reading, regrettably, in 2017, I think it was. So I am sort of running out. And someone suggested that I should, uh, I should review short stories by themselves and I, I did like to like do like the idea of that like bite-sized reviews however a lot of my, the short stories I've read come from collections I've already read anyway so that's kind of unfortunate I might try and see if I can pick out a few that I've not done reviews for anyway so I just want to mention the reason another reason I've not done too many reviews uh, lately is that I have a website now I'm, I'm focusing on writing and uh, I decided to create a little website for myself so you can check that out it'll either be in the comments or it'll be probably just under you can see on the on the screen just now under the webcam um and really i guess other reason is that i'm very i guess just in, in, gen in general when it comes to reading i'm very picky as well i i went through this whole thing of buying a book uh after about a week of choosing and then before that before I even before, when that was dispatching i realized oh i don't actually want to read this for various reasons and then after that a whole other week went by and then trust me to buy eventually land on a book from the 1800s, an obscure book from the 1800s. So let's get into it I suppose. This is The Black Spider by Jeremias Gotelf, I believe it's called, or it's not Gotelf, but it's a Gotelf, I believe it's a Swiss, Swiss author. Um, this is an interesting book and you can see the cover here. Really quite evocative, it's that Vanitas idea of, the, of, of death and mortality. Now the cover, as you can see on the screen, it's not actually a spider. It's got six legs. That would make that would make it an insect. Um, not entirely sure what the deal is with that, but I mean, you'd think if it's called the black spider, you'd have a, a spider on the cover. But maybe I just can't see the other legs. Anyway, I'll read the back just to give you an idea. Now, there's a bit at the end of this blurb at the back that I do have some issues with. But here we go. So Thomas Mann, you might be familiar with Thomas Mann. He says there is scarcely a work in world literature that I admire more. Now, it is a sunny summer Sunday in a remote Swiss village and a christening is beginning, uh, being celebrated at a lovely old farmhouse. One of the guests notices something bizarre, an ancient blackened post carefully built into a trim new window frame. Thereby hangs a tale that the wise old grandfather, who has lived all his life in the house, proceeds to tell, with one dreadful turn after another while his audience listens in appalled silence. Featuring a cruelly overbearing lord of the manor, and the oppressed villagers who must render him service, an irreverent young woman who will stop at nothing, a mysterious stranger with a, with a red beard and a green hat, and, last but not least, the black spider. The tale is a riveting and as, ri as riveting and chilling today as when Jeremiah Scottelf set it down more than a hundred years ago. The black spider can be seen as a parable of evil in, uh, in the heart or at large in society, or as a vision Anticipating H.P. Lovecraft of cosmic horror, there's no question in any case that it is unforgettably creepy. So I'll just say straight away that one of the reasons that I've got this book is that it's, a, it's heralded as the beginnings of weird fiction, and it certainly has very weird elements, but I really feel that's off the mark when it says it, it anticipate, uh, that it anticipates H.P. Lovecraft of cosmic horror. There's no cosmic element to this, there's not even really an existential element to it there's no I, I can't see the link at all I'm afraid it's it's strange it has weird elements but that feels very out of place I thought I was certain because of that that must that's on the back it's on the blurb it must be something cosmic or existential or this this is a Christian story which is it's a moral Christian story with set in medieval times and I'm not quite sure what the subversive HP Lovecraft cosmic element is I, I've, I've read the story and I'm just puzzling over what what the connection is there but um so really I want to say that this is going to be a short review it's it's about 108 pages it's a novella and um I really I go on far too long <laughs> with reviews um the first 20 pages or so of this book they drag on quite a bit this is obviously a book from the 1800s and standards were different back then and um just generally Checking my mic was working. Just generally, 
obviously readers were a lot more attentive in those days. This is a, it starts with a frame story, however the frame story does run on for 20 pages and it's very much, it's just, it's set in like an, an, an omniscient um, perspective where we just get this over overly detailed descriptions of this sort of Swiss hills and mountains and preparations for a baptism essentially and there's a lot of detail about food and, and just all the, all the preparations and then all these different guests coming in and talking to each other and whatnot. Um, So that's you just you de you definitely have to get past that part. I think it's about twenty pages or so, and then there's a scene break, and then it begins, and then so I'll say that the the whole conceit is that there's this so af so after they have their their food and and the baptism takes place, and they come back to the house, they go down to the church in the valley, and they come back to the house, and they have all their meals and whatnot and all their chit chat. They're sitting on a hill, and they look they're looking down at this rural house or cottage. And they see a black post, a window post, and one of them asks the grandfather, "Why is that window post there? It looks out of place." And that's sort of there in life's story. It's um, it's the it's how that post came to be there and what that stands for, and what it, what it signifies. And really, that's where the story gets interesting because it, we go back from we go back in time to the medieval period. So I'll say that this this story is quite a simple premise, but I think it's it's heralded as this um. Uh, there's a lot of social dynamics in this in this uh, story, and, and they say on in various sources that it's it's well known for its complex narrative structure. Basically, there's actually the framework sort of links to the story, and the framework comes back a couple of times. It's quite interesting, and really the story is simply about the life of peasants and farmhands and how they interact with a castle. There's a, there's a, an overbearing lord called von Stoffeln. I believe I believe he's called Hans von Stoffeln, and um. He really is a, a megalom megalomaniacal character who is ungodly essentially, um, and he 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 has his castle up in the hills, and he wants his his workers to actually build a a shady walk for 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 himself and for his knights, his retinue of knights. And so the way that's achieved is he wants, in a quite a cruel way, he wants the uh, peasants who are essentially slaves to build. To sort of to take beech trees from a faraway area and bring them back as 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 plantings essentially to then to then create the shady walk of course, and that's really where the first the first conflict begins. Um, I'll just I'll break away here just to say that an odd an odd part of this book is that there isn't too many names. It's a little bit strange. There's there's a lot of hand there's a lot of Hanses. Uh, there's Hans Uli from the frame story. There's Hans von Stoffeln, the uh, lord of the manor or castle, and there's there's a Christine and a Kristen as well. Christine, uh, I'll get onto Christine later. And yeah, they're, they're the only two people people that are named. So it's double multiple Hanses and two names that sound similar. And the reason that's complicated is because there's a lot of different characters in this. It sort of goes through many. It's like a chronicle and. Uh, None of them have names, and it can get a little bit confusing sometimes, when, especially when there's multiple mothers giving birth and sons that grow up and die, etc. Anyway, um, so once this uh, shady walk uh, has been charged upon, creating the shady walk has been charged upon the peasants, the workers, the slaves. There's a woman called Christine who's very headstrong. She she sort of chides the uh, these these workers with not sort of standing up to the the Lord of the Manor, Von Stoffeln. And I won't really say anything more than that other than uh, this is where the, the devil appears. And of course, this is a Christian moral story. The devil appears in a strange form. Um, and that's all, I think that's all I'll say other than that the weir where the weird element comes in is that, of course, the story is called The Black Spider. Now, there's, what, I, what I really enjoyed about the story is that I think it's definitely it's unique. There's this uh, so an interaction with the devil and Christine, I'll say, and the black spider comes out of that in quite a creepy way. And uh, I'll just say I'll break away here and I'll say that this story actually reminds me of the tale of Ungoliant or Ungoliant uh, from Tolkien. If you're aware of that, this is very interesting. It's it seems like. 
it seems like Tolkien might have read this. It was this this story was written in eighteen forties. Uh, so he might have read this when he was growing up. I'm not I'm not entirely sure because it's this devil character, that Satan himself, in the form I'll just say of of the Green Huntsman, if you're aware of that. Uh, and he has he is then associated with spider. So it's like Melkor and Ungoliant, to feel if that makes any sense to you. It's very interesting, especially because it's a medieval story and it's a Christian moral fable. So I, just, I wondered if it feels very connected to Tolkien in a way. Um, yeah. And I'll say, I think, so I'll just say that the story really deals with how this rural community deals with the... Uh, the charge of build, building these, uh, constructing these trees for the Shady Walk, and then how they might use the devil to achieve this, and then that is basically a run-on sort of domino effect. If you see what I mean, where headstrong characters and bad characters and characters that are unmoralistic, if that's a word, uh, become susceptible to the devil's plan. So that's all I can really say for such a short book. Um, and I think, really, where the story works best is when the spider comes into play. And again, it's sort sort of like a, it's sort of a spoiler. And I can, I, I'm always wary about giving spoilers, but there's some really great elements I'll read at the end where the spider actually takes on its its true form, and we get some really creepy. It, I, I reckon you don't want to read this book if you're an arachnophobe. Uh, it's very reminiscent of again on Goliath and. Aragog and uh, sort of iconic spiders from various media, and uh, that's really where the story. I enjoyed the story best when it when it got to the spider and uh, things became a little bit weird and creepy. But again, I'll say nothing in this book really feels cosmic at all. There's no in, even indication of that. I was I, I was expecting by the end, we almost um, Hodgson. House on the Borderland level of weirdness and cosmic spirits or entities or, or just journeys out into space maybe maybe visions of God but nothing like that, it, it feels very much more like a I'm forgetting, I read Narcissus and Goldman by Herman Hesse, or Hesse Hesse I think, which I've read and really enjoyed, it's one of my favourite books actually uh, it, it, it reads almost more like that, the only weird element is the spider and the fact that that uh, the, uh, the the devil uses some quite strange um, creatures, uh, rustic woodland creatures, to help in his plans. Essentially, that's all I'll say. But yes, again, it doesn't feel particularly. I think the the Lovecraft mention is very odd for this for the blurb at the back. Um, just looking at my notes here, I think the main drawback, unfortunately, I can only give this. I feel like this is a it's a little bit higher than mediocre for me. I did enjoy reading it, it's a very quick and easy read, the language is perfectly fine. I just felt that it was a little bit repetitive. Repetitive in the narrative sense, in that a lot of the things that happen from the middle are actually repeated by the end and it gets a little bit samey. Also, there's a lot of imagery that's repetitive as well. They talk about um, fire and the marrow and uh, Fear of God and whatnot, and it just gets a little bit repetitive. But well, that latter that latter latter element is obviously uh, what you, probably what you'd expect from a Christian moral fable. But just the actual the weird imagery is when when that does come, it's a little bit repetitive at times. Of course, it's good at the, at the beginning, but it does draw in a little bit. Um, and I think this isn't a story about characters really. There are characters in it. But they all sort of blend into one for me. Again, the names Christine, this headstrong woman, and then later Kristen, this sort of pious Christian man. It's, they they are they're, they're polar opposites, but their their the names are similar, and there are various priests, and there are uh, various mothers who give birth, and they're they're unnamed, and they sort of blend into one a little bit. So that's kind of unfortunate. I think the story's really decent for what it is, and just this idea of the black spider itself and what that what that means and um, that's that's really where the story works for me I think so I think I, I definitely I definitely suggest reading it so I think I'll go for the excerpts now the poor men pricked up their ears at this unexpected offer if they could agree on the terms 
it would be their salvation, for they could cart the beeches to Kilchstalden, the hill upon which the church stood, without neglecting their own fields to their ruin. And so the old man said, Tell us then what you would ask of us, that we might come to an agreement. Here the green man's face took on a sly expression. There was a crackling in his beard, his eyes began to flicker like the eyes of a snake, and a ghastly smile played about the two corners of his lips as he parted to speak the words. As I said, it is not much. All I ask is an unbaptized child. This next excerpt is really, uh, it's, it does contain a spoiler, but it's where the story for me really is mo most enjoyable. In vain did the knight ride and shout his animals did not return to him. Then he rode to where the people were, wishing to question them, and they stood waiting until he drew close. Then they shrieked in horror and fled to the woods in the ravine, for atop the knight's helmet sat the spider, black and swollen to supernatural size, glowering balefully, maliciously all around. The knight was carrying the very thing he sought and did not know it. In ardent fury he shouted and gave chase to the people fleeing before him, shouting ever more furiously, riding ever faster, bellowing ever more dreadfully, until he and his steed tumbled over a cliff and down into the valley. There his body was found, and his helmet. The spider's feet had burned their way through the helmet and into his brain, igniting the most horrific flames there until death overtook him. So that was The Black Spider. Fairly short, a short review. Uh, I definitely suggest reading it. It's not the best story ever, and I do feel like there are some drawbacks, but for what it is, it's just an enjoyable reading. I wish I, wish I could say that this is where Weird started, uh, but it's... I feel like I feel like there's there's not it's not it's not any less it's not any more weird than any sort of gothic story before that before this or or yeah I'm just not sure what the connection is anyway I I, I did enjoy reading it that was a black spider thanks for watching everyone.